Hello, welcome to a Saturday morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. Got Stanley right here and Lucy is just coming in to join us. It's, I had to get up early this morning. The, I got a text message from another pastor in town asking, so the school board was asking for pastors to, to go out and pray during our, uh, for 15 minutes, lead anybody who gathered there for, for um, prayer time for the election today, school board election. So, um, so I went, I was assigned to Cook Elementary School, which is a school where um, St. Mark gives their um, snack sacks to underprivileged children or hungry children, I should say. And um, so when I got there, nobody came to pray with me, which I'm not surprised. I mean, it's just, um, I didn't know how organized it was or and so I just prayed for 15 minutes for the schools and for Cleburne. Then I went to vote and I had to go to the other, to another school to vote. Um, Gerard voted there and for the school board bond election to improve our schools. So I don't know how it's going to go. For some, for some reason I thought that Somebody had said that it wasn't going to raise anybody's taxes, but every one of them said this is a tax increase. So, so we'll see. I don't know. But. So now I'm home. And the dogs are ready to go for a walk. It's really cloudy. Looks like it could possibly rain, but I'm not sure it's going to. So I guess we'll take one in a few minutes after I get this uploaded anyway. And today is the last day of our reading through Christian Maturity by E. Stanley Jones. So we're going to, it's week 52, Saturday of week 52. So we're going to finish up that book and I guess we'll start a new book. Tomorrow, I was trying to decide if I wanted to, to start immediately or wait a little while, wait a week or two. But, you know, I'm going on a spiritual retreat. We're supposed to, we're one of our, we're supposed to go on a spiritual retreat every year. And it can be anything, something organized, something um, not so structured. And I usually go to a monastery and just spend time with the monks. Last time I did it was... I didn't go to a monastery. I just went to Glen Lake Camp, which is just up the road. I just went for a few days and I was sick the whole time. <laughs> so, and I was, this was before I started losing weight. My, my arthritis, I had my doctor's appointment where they discovered I had arthritis. I had all, all these ideas of what it could possibly be. And arthritis was not on my list, <laughs> but it was arthritis. And so then I went and I lost some weight and now I don't have that pain I had. I do when I walk downstairs mostly. Not so much upstairs, but downstairs. So, um, <clears throat> but I think losing weight has helped me put off having knee replacement surgery. I'm sure I'll have to have it someday, but hopefully it will, it's a long way down the, the pike. Um, if I continue to row, I think, I think that's good for the knee and to walk the dogs and do other things that are more healthy and not gain the weight back, then I think that I'll be okay for a little bit longer anyway. Postpone it. We shall see. We shall see indeed. And Stanley is here at my feet. And I'm wondering if I pick up the Bible and stop scratching him right behind his neck. If he's going to immediately get up and say, why'd you stop? And then I'll have to kick him out. Anyway, so I was saying I was going on this spiritual retreat at, uh, the last week of May. So I'll preach on Sunday morning, Pentecost Sunday, and then um, leave that week and go to a monastery in Arkansas, Subiaco, Arkansas. I used to go to one in Ava, Missouri, which is, I probably mentioned this before, it's where my grandparents, my dad's parents grew up. My dad's dad and grandmother were born in, um, in Douglas County, Missouri, not far from Ava. 
my grandmother's family moved there when she was about 10 years old. And, and then they left, uh, my grandparents, when they got, after they got married, they left about 19, I mean, they, my grandmother moved there in, um, I think 1903. And, um, they, my grandparents left Missouri and went to work for an oil company in Oklahoma in, um, 1920. And then they moved to Texas where my dad was born and then moved back to Kansas. And anyway, it's, a, they were from Missouri, they have a Missouri and, um, Missouri as my dad called it. And, um, <clears throat> The Spurrier, my grandmother's last name was Spurrier. Their old home place is still there, um, east of Ava. Not owned by anybody in the Spurrier family, though there are a couple of Spurriers still there. Maybe just one Spurrier still there, <laughs> still in Ava. And, um, but lots of Rippies. My granddad's family was the Rippy family. His, he, of course, was a Tyler, but his mother married an Elliot. She was a Rippy who married an Elliot first, and then my great-grandfather, Henry Tyler. Not very many Tylers, but a whole bunch of Elliots. whole bunch, a slew of Elliots and Rippies up there in Douglas County, Missouri. Anyway. So I used to go to Ava. But Subiaco is a little bit closer. I don't feel as guilty because, you know, if you pray to... One of the things I try to do when I go to the monastery is I pray the hours with the monks. And um, in Ava, they started like, I can't remember if the, if the prayer time is at 3.30 or 2.30 or whatever. The, the earliest prayer is early, very early, 2.30 or 3.30. And I was just like, just, I wasn't resting. <laughs> but I felt guilty if I didn't do it. You know, I finally decided I'm going to give myself some grace and I wasn't doing it. But, um at Subiaco, the first prayers are at 6.30 in the morning. So I can do 6.30 in the morning. And so I'll probably, while I'm going to Subiaco, it's a little bit closer, a little nicer too. I mean, the, I mean, the one in Ava is really nice. It's nice. It's very isolated. And, and they share a bathroom with somebody else. And I'm just, you know... 21st century person. I prefer to have my own bathroom. And at Subiaco, I have my own bathroom. And it's, and it's closer. As I've said that two or three times. That's one good reason. Um, but, you know, there's. I'll probably go back to Ava again eventually, but I decided to do Subiaco this year. But one thing about Ava is the one at Ava, Ascension Abbey is what it's called. It's right next to, uh, well, it's like, you can, two miles as a crow flies from where my great my great grandfather's buried, um, and it's right in the same area as where the Tylers and Spurriers all the Rippies all lived. And um, you go down the Bryant Creek, um, just about a mile from the monastery. You walk down this 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 old this old country road, and you come to this creek. And and Dad would talk about. Hell, they used to, he used to swim in Bryant Creek. Bryant Creek went on their pro went through their property or bordered their property was right on the, that same creek a couple of miles away. So that was always kind of cool. I think this it really does connect me with with where I'm from. And the same kind of connection with Brownwood area. That's where my mom's family's from. We used to go there when I was a little kid, but my grandparents both died by the time I was five, my mom's parents. So um, <clears throat> after that, we would go there occasionally, but I have a whole bunch of relatives buried in the cemeteries around Brownwood and um, May, Owens, you know, communities there just north of Brownwood. I keep telling you all these things you don't care about. <laughs> Here is our reading. Let me get rid of this boy. Stanley, time for you to leave the room. Good puppy. It's amazing how good he is. He just walks right out there. Maybe he thinks I'm going to follow him. I don't know. 
But we're reading today from Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 17 through, oh my goodness, I don't remember, 17 through something, or maybe it's 14 through 17, 13, no, 13 through 17 and then 24. I knew that we had to read the last verse. So 13, you have heard no doubt of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuted. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in my ju Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to, Ma to Damascus. And then skipping to verse 24. And they glorified God because of me. We're going to go on and read those extra verses in between, of course. Then afterward, three years, after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, of P Peter, of course, stayed with him 15 days, but I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. And what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, our reading, our final reading from Christian Maturity by E. Stanley Jones. We come to our last day together and the last emphasis must be upon the highest maturity and the most mature of faiths, agape love. And when I think of one of its supreme illustrations, I need not turn to the early days of martyrdom, but fresh out of the heart of communist China comes this one. Three Christian preachers were hailed before a communist court. And when the judge heard there were Christian preachers, he said, it seems to me I remember that their founder was crucified. So crucify them. They were crucified, but their tormentors did not know enough about the story to lift them up. So they dragged them into the public street where they lay amid the dust and flies and gaping crowds. And lying there, what did they do? With swollen, to swollen tongues, they preached the gospel to the onlookers. Preached it till their dying gasps on the third day. Few of us are given the privilege of being nailed to outer crosses to show our agape. But we may be nailed to unseen crosses of opposition in the home or business or shop or school, nailed to the cross of the lifelong denial of a life partner, nailed to the cross of a bitter destiny to live with an affliction, perhaps incurable, nailed to the cross of, an, of the humdrum, nailed to the cross of a denied life ambition. In all of these circumstances and others, we can react in agape love and witness with life and lips to our love and loyalty to him who is agape. In doing so, we show our maturity and grow into maturity. As I was writing this page, a basket of fruit was brought to my room in the hotel, telegraphed from a distant city by an ex-alcoholic, a woman. She wrote, When my father, whom I deeply loved, died, I was lonely and lost. A void was left within. I put a bottle there, became an alcoholic. The bottle lettered down a core, of course, and as all idols do. Then she met the real in Jesus. And suddenly her immaturities dropped away and now she stands basically mature and radiantly happy and useful. So maturity is open to everybody from the alcoholic to the apathetic to the degree of surrender and obedience to Jesus, the maturest fact of the manifested universe. Here's our prayer for today. O oh, Jesus, we began with you and we end with you, for you are the Alpha and of our maturity and the Omega of our maturity. In you, our maturity is guaranteed, for if we remain in you, we shall be like you, and that is maturity. Amen. Our affirmation for the day, Jesus, the source of my maturity, the means of my maturity, and the end of my maturity. 
I kind of started off, I never really finished. We're going to start tomorrow with this book, In Christ, by E. Stanley Jones, 364 Meditations on Passages from the New Testament. And I will take that week off when I um, am on my spiritual retreat. I won't be doing this, but I'll probably pick up on the Sunday, which I'll still be on my retreat the Sunday after. Um, but I'll probably record that Sunday morning and upload it. The monastery does have internet, unlike the other monastery in Missouri. <laughs> no, that's not the reason I'm going there. Jesus is Lord. 